Maynard James Keenan is best known as the lead singer for Tool, A Perfect Circle, and Pussifer, but he's also a vintner in Arizona, which has a burgeoning wine scene. He's making wine under his own label, Caduceus, which is based outside the mining town of Jerome. He's blogged for Wine Spectator about his experiences, and a documentary about his endeavors called Blood into Wine was released in 2010. He's stopped by Wine Spectator offices while on tour with a perfect circle to fill us in on his latest. So, Maynard, tell us a little bit about why Arizona, of all places, that you could have started making wine. Just looking at the terroir there, just the, in general, uh, the volcanic soils, the, the limestone, the elevation, it just seemed like a very appropriate place to plant a few grapes, having seen parts of Italy, parts of Spain, it just made, kind of made sense. Was there something about it that you felt would make it a really special place for wine? Uh, which is energetically. It's just a really special place uh, in general. One of the vineyards that I have is uh, situated above what was the largest, one of the largest uh, copper ore mines uh, in the world. So it's almost like a great big battery in a way. So just energetically, you know, it's a copper top. So uh, there's a lot of good energy there. What do you think the potential of Arizona is as a wine growing region? Well, the beauty of northern Arizona is again the, the lack of avail available land. So it's going to end up being small microclimates of, of vineyards that, that are established because just, there just isn't a thousand acres to plant vines on up there as far as a private piece of land. Initially, I would think that it's going to end up being developed by you know, true farmers and artists and artisans that are going to make very specific wines for specific sites in small quantities. That's going to be our leg up. And so you've been making wine there since 2004. Your first harvest from your own vineyards was 2007. Right. What have been the biggest surprises for you as you've learned how to make wine and grow grapes? Of course, that's still yet to be seen. We're still a very young, uh, young industry there. But one of the biggest surprises was that the number of varietals that are actually doing really well, as opposed to, say, Oregon, which is clearly Pinot is awesome in Oregon. Well, in Arizona, it seems like we have a lot, we're having a lot of success with all kinds of uh, Italian varietals, uh, Spanish varietals, and depending on the location, uh, Southern Rhone. This is from a Southern Arizona site that was already planted. We picked up this vineyard uh, from a prior owner. And the way that they planted the vineyard, the Nebula vineyard, and the clone that they chose for that site, and the way they were cropping it, I just don't think that that site is ever going to get a fantastic Nebbiolo off it as just a regular Nebbiolo. We're actually planting in this next spring and we're going to cor correct all those mistakes on a, northern, a northern Arizona site. So what I did on the southern Arizona site is I went ahead and picked everything relatively early and did just pressed whole cluster uh, Nebbiolo for, uh, for a rosé and it came out, came out really well. Of course, you know, Nebbiolo tannins can be a little daunting sometimes, but we managed to avoid some of the more aggressive tannins uh, with a very slow uh, press cycle and then cold fermented it for a very long time. Tell us about the red wine you brought. This is one of your signature wines. It's a blend of Syrah with a white grape variety. Yes, Malvasia Bianca. Malvasia Bianca is a fantastic potential for Arizona. And I'm blending it in, the, in, in, a, in with a Syrah, 12% Malvasia Bianca, kind of a coat roti style. A little heavy handed, but uh, in generally speaking, this is kind of my, uh, my introductory wine for people who are not quite sure that they're going to be in, into wine. But when you get the, the nose on that Malvasia Bianca coming out of that glass of a red wine, they're like, maybe I do like wine. So what aromatics in here do you get from the Malvasia? Well, the Malvasia is what I, that generally jumps out first for me, and it's very, it's very sexy, it's very alluring, uh, it has a lot of the tropical and creamy notes, uh, almost like orange peel mm -hmm. uh, creaminess that is very attractive. What characteristics in the wine come from the Syrah? Generally speaking, the, the body on this, on this wine is the Syrah. We've kind of described this wine as, it's kind of like watching Madonna perform. You have all these sculpted dancers on stage, all sweaty muscular dudes. <laughs> it's all these like sculpted dancers on there, but they're basically just there to support Madonna. They lift, them, lift her up above their head and you're focusing on the Malvasia really. So this wine is, even though it's only 12%, to me this wine is much more about the Malvasia. So what got you into not only drinking wine, but going to the extreme of actually making your own wine? I really enjoy the chaos that goes into every bottle of wine. What's going on that year on that site, uh, taking different sites from across the country and putting them together, taking one site specific and, and working with that 
place and a time and a bottle. I just, it's very inspiring to me. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your touring schedule to come by and fill us in on Arizona wine and your projects. And uh, have a great show tonight. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.